Hi everyone, my name is Ms. Emily. I am a librarian here at the Mooresville Public Library in Mooresville, Indiana. And today we're gonna have a program about making art using light and shadows and a flashlight. Today's program is all about flashlight art. Uh, so stop by the library for your packet and you'll get a packet with uh, a paper of three different projects that you can do, art projects, uh, that have to do with flashlights. So I'll go through what all three of them are. For the first project, shadow tracing, prop up a flashlight so the light falls on your paper and covers most of it with light. This might take some adjustments. Alternatively, you can do this project in front of a sunny window, but remember that shadows made from sunlight will move over time as the sun changes position. Put some objects in front of the light so that the shadows fall on your paper. These can be toys, potted plants, household objects, anything that makes an interesting shadow. You can adjust the shadow uh, or the light source um, to make it look the way you want it to look. Optionally, you can tape down your paper so it doesn't move while you work. Trace the edges of the shadow on your paper with a pencil. Again, you can change the light if you want new shadows to trace. The shapes you make with your pencil can be interesting art by themselves, but consider using paint or markers to color in either the positive or negative space. Positive space is the space that the object in this case, a shadow takes up. Negative space is all the space around and in between it, the background. Coloring the negative space is an interesting way to see the shape in a new light. We gave out watercolor paints with another project several weeks ago. If you didn't get one of those, just ask at the desk. We do have extra paint palettes, but we won't be putting them in every single packet. Project two is transforming shadows. Set up your paper and flashlight like you did in step one of project one. And to make a shadow, put one object or a group of objects all stuck together in front of the light to make one distinct shadow. Study the shape of the shadow and imagine it as part of something else. Draw around the shadow to fill in the details from your imagination. You may choose to trace the shadow shape itself or only draw details and take a picture of the drawing with the shadow like Bal does. This project is inspired by artist Vincent Bal's work and you can see more of his work for inspiration on your sheet and in the link provided. Project 3 doesn't use an actual flashlight, but it uses the idea of flashlights to create an optical illusion for your drawing. So you'll have a, sh a white sheet of paper and a black sheet of paper in a Ziploc bag in your packet. And uh, you'll need to have some either permanent markers or dry erase markers um, to draw with and draw a scene on your paper. And you could draw anything here, but some scenes that would work really well are scenes that happen in the dark. So under the sea, or in a dark forest, or in a cave, or even under your bed. I drew a forest scene with some different nocturnal animals in the scene. An owl, a skunk, an opossum, a raccoon, and some bats. Next, grab your cardstock sheet with the picture of the flashlight on it. You can color the flashlight part. Leave the beam of light blank, and that tells you that on there. Then cut it out. Remove the white sheet of paper so that only the black sheet remains inside the bag. Now, it's hard to see your drawing, but if you insert your flashlight between the black sheet of paper and your drawing, things are magically illuminated. So that's a really fun project 
to do an optical illusion of a flashlight lighting up your drawing. Okay, friends, there are a lot of really interesting books about light and shadow, and I have a couple of them that I'd like to share with you right now. The first one is a nonfiction book, Exploring the Science of Light. It is put together by the Exploratorium, which is a science museum in San Francisco. And there are just a whole bunch of uh, experiments and activities that you can do that explore light and shadow. Um, like this one is doing a shadow box theater. Uh, which would be really cool to do. There's another one uh, that I thought was really neat is about making art using light and cameras. So the light is captured by the camera and uh, makes an image on your picture. So that's a really interesting one if you'd like to do some more experimentation and um, explore the science of light. There's also, of course, everyone's done shadow figures on the wall, but this book is really neat. It is an alphabet and silhouette. It is actually in our board book section, but I think older kids would enjoy it too. And it just basically puts together um, a, a, an animal for every letter of the alphabet that you can do with your hands. And it shows what the hands look like if you have any props that help you out, like this looks like a cardboard tube to make the elephant's um, trunk. Uh, I like this one with the yak. If you wear a fuzzy sweater, it can make it look like the yak, uh, the yak's fuzzy neck. So there's a whole bunch of those if you'd like to learn some uh, hand shadow figures. That's a cool book to get. And I have three um, picture books and picture books we think of a lot of times for younger kids but I really think that there's a lot to be said for older kids enjoying them as well because you guys will get a lot more of the context that are in them so the first one is called shadow it's by Susie Lee it's a wordless picture book so there's no uh, words to read but you're reading the pictures and it's about a little girl who's playing in her garage and she's playing with the shadows that she sees on the floor. And you can see the top page is mirrored on the bottom as the shadows of all those objects. And you can see she moves them around and um, tries to make different scenes. And then the shadows start having a life of their own. And it's a really fun book. Uh, thinks about imagination and there's a lot to look at on each picture. You can see it opens up and down which is unusual for books. So that's Shadow. The next one is called Flashlight by Lizzie Boyd and this one um, is another one that shows kind of the night life in a forest. It is a young person who has their flashlight and in the pictures, you can see everything is kind of this gray color, except for what is illuminated by the flashlight. And so uh, this, this child goes through the forest and sees all kinds of different night animals um, and plants and, and different things. I also like it has some cutouts, so you can see things that were on the previous page. And then there's a lot to look at on each page as well in, in the details of the pictures. So that is Flashlight by Lizzie Boyd. And the last one is just silly. This one is Night Animals. This is by Gianna Marino. And this is about a group of night animals that hear a noise in the night. Ow! And they are scared. They're like, did you hear something? Um, and each time they see a new animal, it's another bigger animal. So the opossum and the skunk see a wolf, but the wolf is just as scared as they are. And something is following me. So it's a funny book with kind of a surprise ending called Night Animals. Enjoy. That's it for today. I hope you had fun playing with light and shadow and making interesting art with your flashlights. If you tried any of the projects we did today, 
We would love to see them. Send your pictures to kids at mooresvillepublic.lib.in.us. Take care. Have a good one.